Monson here with the Good Morning Portugal show, a live stream and podcast. How are you this morning? I'm a little bit stiff and creaky. Yes, and my physical condition isn't so great either. Really, yes. Um, I don't know where to start this morning. What a fantastic day yesterday. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, left the studio and pretty much had to get on the road to go meet Colin after talking to Colin on the show yesterday, actually. It was uh, Go Motoring Portugal, of course, uh, for Thursday of the month. And then we went off to pick up a car to try the latest uh, in our series of Toyotas that we're reviewing and enjoying, I have to say. Uh, here's the motor that we uh, picked up yesterday. Uh, the, the Novo Toyota CHR, probably one of the worst names ever for a car, apart from those cars, uh, those car names that mean something dirty in a foreign language. I guess from that point of view, the CHR is quite safe. But come on. Three letters for the name of a car. What, what else could we call that? We could call that the the dart, couldn't we? Or something something evocative, and um, you know something that conjures up a great emotion or feeling rather than the chr. Uh, and it's got some beautiful lines. It's got some beautiful details. Look at that. It lights up at the back like that. It advertises itself everywhere it goes when the lights come on the Toyota chr. And it does have some amazing design, including that's the front end of it. <laughs> from a low angle and um, for those of you who think oh you never see dead flies on the on a windscreen anymore this car is putting that right it has a special flat panel that's almost um, what 90 degrees uh, to the oncoming um insect traffic and you can count the number of insects that you catch on any given journey with this particular car absolutely lovely motor i will be making a video about it of it um with my um with the co-pilot yesterday, and here he is. Uh, I can explain. Um, you saw the opening meme. Uh, one does not simply play netball. And um, what's the next bit? Good morning to you, Jones Travelers, by the way. Um, and walk properly the next day. I couldn't walk properly the, soon after the match. Excellent hospitality. We'll be talking to Suzanne and Becky from the Silver Coast Sirens in a few minutes' time. What a wonderful time they showed us. Those ladies showed us. They knew how to show the us gents a good time. Um, we turned up, I think, suitably dressed. Did anyone else pick up the detail there? The Portuguese flag, as expressed in tutus worn by men, not just the red and the green, but a bit of yellow as well. Isn't that great? Uh, which was pointed out by Rui Ira, who uh, lent us the motor yesterday. Great to see you, Rui. And we've got a great plan for the next one, which will be coinciding with the Carnation Revolution celebration. So looking forward to trying the Corolla next. I think it's called the Corolla Cross. Last night as well, what a fantastic webinar, plugging into Portugal. Even if you've lived here for a while, some great information, navigating utilities, the setup for a smooth transition to Portugal. And as I say, even if you've already connected to the various utilities, still some useful information in there. Great job, Ivana and Carolina from the Casa Portuguesa team. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll have highlights of what's going on at the weekend. Up mainly in the Bairada area. Feel free also to introduce your events, your local events, and anything you're going to into the mix this morning. Oh, and we also popped in, Colin and I also popped in to the Prohibition Bar. It doesn't have this sign outside it. Uh, thanks, James, for this uh, this morning. It could well have, though, at some point. A wise doctor once wrote, blah, 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 squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. 
Very good there. And we'll come back to the other meme you've sent in a little bit later on, James. It's Feel Good Friday, and there's definitely Feel Good Friday vibes in the air. Paolo Fanasi will be joining us with his political colleague. Um, we're going to be finding out about more about AD, the Democratic Alliance, a little bit later on this morning in a lighthearted way. And I've got a tornado to show you. I was going to say, you know, look at this tornado. What in Africa or South America or somewhere really scary when it comes to the weather? No, this was filmed in this was filmed in Lisbon uh, yesterday. So, yeah, Paolo Fonasi uh, joining us a little bit later on with his colleague from the AD party, João Tejera Simplicio. Uh, will be joining us and uh, we'll be having a, a, a nice easygoing chat if you want to learn more about the new political the leading political force here in Portugal AD stick around and join us for that and we'll be finding out more as well as Paolo he's a foreigner he's an Italian living in Albufeira he started that amazing group for foreigners uh, for some more foreigner representation immigrant representation down there in Albufeira it's going really well uh, and I think he's going to be running for uh, mayor as well down there. And this is annoying me now. I just need to just change my camera angle slightly. There you go. Um, it was a choice between sitting up straight with a nice erect posture or moving the camera. I, I'm really aching this morning after netball. Who knew it would be so strenuous being on the court? And uh, what a game it is. What a, I mean, often the way, isn't it? You look at it and you think, well, that can't be that difficult. It's only until you try it that you really find out. Mess about and find out. That's exactly what happened yesterday. Barak, good to see you. Coach Turner is in as well, as is James. And uh, let's go back to where the conversation began this morning on this uh, Sexta Feira, putting the sex in Sexta Feira today. Bom dia, Gampas. Feliz Sexta a todos. Como está? Tudo bem. And I'm not the only one. I am not the only one who's keen to speak more Portuguese and think that we could all do a better job with this. I found out last night that uh, on Thursdays, one Thursday a month, over on the Expats Portugal webinar, Tia Filomena and I will be chatting and talking about basic Portuguese language and culture. Great, great development over there. There's something in the air. We're going to get those T-shirts. I think I'm going to get a prototype T-shirt uh, printed today. You know the one, Podemos Falar Português, this one? I think we're going to get one of these today. I need to let you into something. There is a slight hold-up on the design. Um, talking to Siobhan over at CO Print. Um, if you let me just take your comment off the screen there for a moment, James. I'm um, talking to Siobhan. She said the red L plate. That certainly means something in the UK. Not so much here. Apparently, the um, when people knew you were a learner in Portugal, there was a, a sign with a, the number 90 on it. And when learners had passed their test, they weren't allowed to drive more than 90 kilometers per hour. Funny, isn't it, that that particular system? It makes sense when you think about it, but they weren't allowed to drive more than 90, probably in a built-up area um, for that matter. That's for the more experienced driver here in Portugal, as we know. But um, she said that you read... Uh, L, it doesn't mean so much in the Portuguese culture. And that's us learning Portuguese. Do you think the blue L might be better there? I don't think I can put 90, um, you know, like a, as, a, as a speed limit on there. I'm thinking the blue L, what else could we signify that we're a learner? And that although we would, Podemos uh, falar Portuguese, we'd like to speak Portuguese. Can we speak Portuguese? But devagar, por favor. What else? Uh, how would you adjust that T-shirt um, if the red learner L is not such a clear signal that you're a learner here in Portugal? Uh, we need a bit of a team effort on that this morning. Um, if you could help out with that, because um, I'm going to get a prototype printed up today. OK, uh, let's where's me. Um, where's me surround here? Oh, there it is. There's my frame. Uh, let's go back to your comments. Uh, oh, and we've got a new Bom Dia Portugal video. Thank you very much on 913. 590303 from somebody who was on the webinar last night and I suspect will be here uh, this morning at some point. Mindful moment then from James. Happiness is not created as a result of certain conditions. This from a Neil Donald Walsh. He of the conversations with God and happy Easter to you. Boa Pasqua. Pasqual. Uh, if you want to, uh, I think, you know, I'm, 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 I'm making it optional. Just say it. Say it to somebody Portuguese today. Although, and together we'll deal with this as well. I'm going with Boa Pasqual, um, Pasqual, a kind of um, a little bit nasal at the end. Boa Pasqual, Happy Easter. Please try that today, and um, you can uh, you'll you'll have the benefit of feeling warm and mushy 
Um, and you'll, if, if, if they don't say this to you, you can say it to yourself on the inside. Muito bem. Muito bem. Talking of Tia Filomena. And you can also say to yourself, Hua. I just spoke Portuguese. Hua. Hua. This morning, I'm more of a ha uh, than a hua, I have to say. Suzanne and um, Becky joining us from the Silver Coast at Sirens real soon. So happiness is not created as a result of certain conditions. Completing the sentence, certain conditions are created as a result of happiness. Mm. Gum dust on you for that. Mindful dad joke. In that instant, Ed reached total enlightenment, then lost it again when the trap. Oh, and the traffic light turned green. It can happen. It, it does happen, doesn't it? So easily. It's the shortest unit of time in Portugal, certainly in Lisbon, is um, w when the traffic light turns green and the taxi driver behind you blares his horn. Who doesn't like a horn blaring first thing in the morning? Thank you very much. Seems like a good moment to share your other meme this morning as well. We're talking of universal matters, as we seem to be there. Thank you very much, James, for this and your continued input. We'll see you Monday. It was a sad and disappointing day when I discovered my universal remote control did not, in fact, control the universe. And the bit you can't see there is not even remotely. So then um, be warned if you are in a Chinese shop and you see universal remote control, they do not control the universe, um, as James has discovered here, I think. Um, lots of other great things you can buy in a Chinese shop like um, red and green tutus, as uh, Colin and I discovered yesterday. Thank you very much, James. And we're getting ready. Um, if you want to warm up as we did yesterday for the arrival of the Silver Coast Sirens, please do so now. OK, uh, where did we get to in the chat? We got to James's mindful memory, didn't we? And um, Coach Turner is in the mix this morning as well. Good to see you. Bon dia todos. We were talking about you yesterday, Coach Turner, obviously, because we were talking about motors. Bon dia todos. We made it to Friday. Party time. Feel good Friday. Uh, weather a bit damp here this morning, but due to be sunny this afternoon. So we'll be out for a bit of a walk. Have a wonderful good Friday. Yes. Uh, happy good Friday to you. Um, yeah, however you celebrate. And if you would like to share how you celebrate, good, please do so uh, in the chat, if you will. God Squad tip of the day, then. I think the Silver Coast Sirens will love this. Uh, they warmed me up. They uh, ran me ragged and they cooled me down. It was fantastic. Um, really nice to be doing something uh, a bit physical yesterday. Uh, and uh, you'll, you'd have been proud of me. And we've got some documentary evidence as well, as well as just me and Colin in skirts. Um, God Squad tip of the day, while doing a little research on Pavo Nurmi, who's that? I discovered that one of his rivals was a Swede who, and that I guess is somebody from Sweden and not the root vegetable, who trained even more. Who'd have a root vegetable as a competitor? It's quite an easy race, that, isn't it? Um, it was a Swede who trained even more intensely. He pushed himself to the limit every single day. This produced results in the short term but within 10 years his body had broken down and he had to retire i don't think that's going to happen to me or anyone here um by the way the lesson for us is that rest and recovery is as important as the exercise yes on this special day after netball so true rest and recovery most top athletes that i know have one day off each week let this be it and carefully mix the types of workouts they do for us, taking two or three days off, yes, each week will maintain a healthy balance. Now, the interesting thing, they, they know how to achieve a healthy balance over at the Silver Coast Sirens. This is what they call a warm down. Look, that's what they do after the match <laughs> and the training. Isn't that great? Hasn't that just doubled the amount of people suddenly interested in netball here in Portugal? Fantastic. We're going to talk to them. Actually, we're going to talk to them now. It's 8.45. Time is moving on very quickly. Let's give them a nice big round of applause and bring them onto the screen. Suzanne and Becky, good morning to you both. How are morning, you? Suzanne? Everything okay there, Suzanne? I think Suzanne's Everything. frozen there. Um, I can see a very quizzical and, and frozen look on her face there. Let's talk to you, Suzanne, for the moment. Thank you so much for your hospitality and all the fun yesterday. It was fantastic. You're very welcome, Carl. How are you feeling this morning? Knackered. <laughs> I think I think the technical athletics term is. Um, it was it was quite the workout, and I wasn't expecting that. Um, and I'm glad I'm glad we did uh, put our all into it. Would you? Is that a fair assessment? I think um, Colin and I we played to win, didn't we? We had a good go. Oh, you did very well. I was very awesome. impressed with with both performances. Excellent. Oh. Excellent, excellent. And we've got a few photos to look at here, some brilliant images uh, that were captured 
and, and sent through to us. And we're going to find out, of course, from you about your upcoming tour, I think, really, isn't it? You're going down to the Algarve and you've got a match up this way as well. Is that right? We have, yes. Yeah, we've got a, a, a tournament for, with a team from Bath coming over to see us who were just on holiday in Lisbon and contacted us because they fancied a game of netball. So that's a great fantastic. idea. Uh, and joining us as well as the newly formed Lisbon Leos who are coming up as well. That's wonderful. OK, so word is getting around, isn't it? And you were celebrating your birthday yesterday. I think that was part of our invitation, wasn't it, to come and celebrate your birthday with you, as well as eat lovely food and play the game itself. Is it five years you've, you, you've been in business, as it were? It's it's six years now. Six? OK, wow. Did you not count the candles, Carl? Come on. <laughs> I, I, could, I wasn't capable of counting or doing very much at all after that, so forgive me. But that's that's an amazing achievement. T can we go back to the beginning then? Um, you must have had you know an inspiration, sat one day in Portugal thinking, I'd like to start, start a netball club here. Oh, and we've got Becky with us now. Morning, Becky. Good morning. Good morning. To morning. You. Sorry. Have some there you are. There's Becky now. We're, we're, we're all good, and we can have a chat about the formation of the Silver Coast Sirens. Yeah, so what happened about six years ago? Um, well, I moved over about mm, nearly eight years ago now, but uh, I was a, a player back in the UK. And I really missed playing and I really missed a, a women's team sport. Um, so I just put the word out and the response was fantastic. So we, uh, we got together a, a little group of ladies who started to play here. Of course, netball isn't yet um, a, a known game in Portugal because it started off as a Commonwealth sport. Uh, so we didn't have lined courts or anything. So had to improvise, but we managed. We got by, and from we've gone from strength to strength, and now have our own lined court where you played yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Are those lines—they're so annoying, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of them as well. <laughs> Don't run over this line. Don't run over that line. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Can we go back to the old days where we don't have lines? Um, <laughs> miss, my missus is here, saying it's nice to see you wearing clothes. She was a little bit shocked um, when, she, <laughs> when she saw the picture. And we've got more to show, actually. Uh, when she saw this picture first emerging on the social media yesterday, uh, she, was a, she was a bit disappointed, quite frankly. Um, and uh, she was saying, go easy on yourself. You were running around on a netball court yesterday. And she's saying to you two, I think, he moaned for the rest of the evening saying, give me a break. I was working hard on the netball court today. I did try that. She wasn't having any of it. <laughs> I must say, when you arrived yesterday, I have never seen such a look of fear on a man's face. Could I not? Was I not hiding it very well? <laughs> no, no, no poker face there yesterday. Right. Um, uh, this, but... this, there it is, right? I'm still looking a little bit. So the body language <laughs> tells you that's something. Yeah, that's just ahead of our warm up. So um, the way we normally run Thursdays is we we warm everybody up because we want to make sure all the muscles are nice and ready for a game. And then we do a few yeah. drills where we practice some ball skills um, and then we get into actually playing netball. And I must say, you guys were such great sports yesterday. It was really, really good fun. Look, Colin's getting right into it there. Look at him. <laughs> He forgot his trainers. He was really cross with himself. He forgot his trainers. So he had to wear his, the shoes that he came in. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, there we are warming up. The photos are fantastic. Thank you so much for these. Um, oh, we've lost them. Where are, are they? Um, there we go. I'm trying to go through because there, there are so many wonderful images. Oh, there we are. Walking around those uh, lines you, you were talking about there. Um, superb stuff. Um, yes, our our two twos in very thoughtfully, I think, with the green and the red of Portugal. Oh, I think that's all I can show you for the time being there. But they they, they were superb. And a little bit of a video um, as well to share and I'll, of course we'll stick them up on our, our social media um, sites so that people can enjoy some more of the Silver Coast Sirens. Uh, here's, a, here's about 10 seconds of video as well. <laughs> Do you know what was a bit scary? It's like being back at school as well, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> that... <laughs> Someone shout so, yes, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, someone <laughs> shouting at you. So someone throwing a ball at you. He, I think it, it wasn't Colin. I think it was it was Ref uh, who powered the ball into my chest. Oh, she's got quite the throw on her, isn't she? Yes, <laughs> like, yeah. like this, bang! It's like, ow! <laughs> yeah, it comes at you fast and furious. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and and this is available for other people to enjoy. Of course, uh, I think um, you are open to other ladies joining you. Who are you looking for to, to come along to the Silver Coast Siren sessions? And these, this is it normally takes place on a Thursday, does it? A uh, lunchtime we, session. 
Yes, we train on the Thursday afternoon from 2.30 until 4. Yep. Uh, we're open to all ladies who would like to give netball a try. Um, from eight, it's unfortunately only adults at the moment. Um, right. we, we don't run any children's sections. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, anybody's welcome to, to join us. We have um, Silver Coast Sirens on Facebook. We have our Silver Coast Sirens webpage. Becky, do you want to go yeah, for that? Just, uh, if you just search for Silver Coast Netball, um, you should find both our um, location on Google Maps and also our website. And that's also the name of our Facebook page as well. So it's super right. easy to find Silver Coast Netball. It is. And, and I'll, I'll stick that link on the screen as well. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Suzanne. Go ahead. That's all right. And if you're not in the Silver Coast, there are a number of teams down in the Algarve as well. You've got Tavira, Albafura, Lagos, um, and also obviously the newly formed Lisbon Leos. And I do hear of a team in Porto that's thinking of starting up. So... Uh, get in it's, touch. We'll put something's in really touch. happening then, isn't it? Some, something's really going on. It's uh, growing quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you're part of that. Yeah. Th th this is really wonderful. And so, from some people coming from Bath um, in <laughs> in the UK to see you, uh, which is wonderful. And you are heading down to the Algarve for the, for that tournament as well. Tell us a little bit more about that. I imagine the the atmosphere on the tour bus is going to be fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> a bunch of ladies <laughs> into the Algarve. Fun. Yeah, well, sure obviously, will. what goes on tour stays on tour. That's the number one rule for the weekend. I am not prying. I don't want to know. <laughs> I'm not prying. But I just imagine it's going to be really exciting to go down to the Algarve and play the game. It yeah. is. We've got two teams going down. So 20 ladies are, are going down in uh, the late April. And we have seven running teams playing and six walking teams playing. So quite a lot um. of things. So, to, so this is a, a little bit like the sort of corresponding uh, walking football phenomenon that's all, also happening in Portugal. Absolutely, so, They're going, I believe in a couple of weeks. My my but, husband is one of them. So yes. But if you're not super fit and you still want to play netball, you can play the walking version, which I imagine is still quite strenuous, but not as quite as full on as the full on running around the court. In the Algarve, yes, we don't yeah. yet have a walking team. We're working yeah. on it, but uh, we're all too keen and we like to run. <laughs> I noticed yesterday. And there's a number of ladies who would like to start up a walking team. So yeah. get in touch if you would like to, and we'll see what we can do. Yes, yeah. And uh, you are equally competitive, if I may say so, in the buffet uh, area as well. <laughs> <laughs> what a spread! That was, yes, that was, do well. <laughs> it was really, really good. Uh, our, our very own coach, Turner, who keeps us fit here on a Good Morning Portugal so, show, <laughs> said... That is true. That is true. God squad behavior growing old disgracefully there. So it's not all, you know, for people who have bad memories of school and being shouted at and whistles blowing. It's not all being shouted at and whistles blowing. I mean, you clearly have a lot of fun as well there, don't you? So oh, well, I, uh, we certainly do. <laughs> yeah. I only joined the team two years ago and I hadn't played since school. Um, right. And um once you get your head back around um the rules and the lines um it's such fun and the ladies are so supportive as you saw yesterday carl yeah, yeah absolutely. Ever played before people yeah. will take the time to help you show you and coach you even if they're playing against you so it's a really nice sport to get into as a, as a team sport yeah and i, I have i've got an apology for i think it was keely who was helping me uh, on the other team she said i'll look after you uh, with a very kind look on her face because I, I i was at that point i was really struggling <laughs> because uh, I, was, I was completely puffed out and I didn't know what was what. And she said, I'll look after you. And I said, are you just playing games with me psychologically? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not like I that, is it? You die, yeah, I it's, you. it's some real camaraderie, isn't there? It's not It's not yeah. very, you know, It's not. So I don't think it's blokey and competitive and they'll tri trip you up as soon as look at you. It, it seemed like really supportive and, and I guess a really good place to make friends as well. If you are, you know, if you're, if you're a, an expat foreign immigrant, you've come over, and you're feeling a bit lonely and you want to make new friends, this would be a great way to do that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I know it's, it came from the sport, came from the UK originally, but um, there are ladies from all nationalities who have never played before and, and they're playing brilliantly, I have to say. We've got all nationalities there. Yeah, but I do notice, and I, and this is an interesting thing, isn't it? The the, the particular sports that the uh, you know the immigrant demographics bring with them. It was quite Northern European, wasn't it? And and I guess it, the equivalent would be America for American women. It would be basketball, um, and and they're obviously equally welcome. It's it's just like they can't compute netball, can they? In the same way that they can't compute football necessarily. Yes, it, it's not running with the ball, isn't it? And not bouncing the ball. So yes, yeah. it's take a little bit of getting your head around it. 
but once you're there, you know, we've got some great players who really have taken the game on board and uh, yeah. yeah, they're in our squads to come down to the Algarve for our tournament. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. And what about kids? You mentioned that you haven't got a young, I mean, I've got a young daughter. I think she would absolutely love it. The atmosphere and, you know, and, and the, how supportive everybody was towards each other. Is that a possibility in the future? A girls team? We would love to have um, a, a young a women's team. Yeah. Under 18 yeah. team. Yeah. Would, would, but we're not sure that we, we need to really get into the Portuguese schools to to encourage them to give the game a go. So we're working on it. But for the time yeah. being, we're just adults. Yeah, fair enough. So uh, is there anything I've missed? Because, you know, obviously the invitation is there, isn't it, to people co to come and join you at the wonderful Capoeira Association. I mean, what a, an amazing facility you have. Um, I know. Uh, Bobby Dosh, so isn't incredible? Okay. Yeah. You know, this is a little village in Portugal, and, and it's not alone in this, is it? You know, small villages will have the most amazing sports facilities, and they, they, they should be supported as well, these associations shouldn't they? And you did. I mean, buying all that beer afterwards was a really, really good effort, I thought, to, for the community spirit and support. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but what, what a wonderful thing to have there right on your doorstep. And so you could help others if they want. If somebody was, is watching this morning and thinks, you know, I don't live in the on the Silver Coast, but I'd love to do something like this. If they reached out to you, would you help them to, to start such a thing in their own area as well? We are part of and help set up Netball Portugal. Right. So Netball Portugal is like the overarching federation or we're working towards federation status. Cool. And Netball Portugal have got a pathway to help new clubs set up. Yeah. So please reach out to Netball Portugal and uh, right. we're very happy to help. That's so superb. So is there anything else you'd like to add on this Feel Good Friday before you go into the weekend? It's an Easter weekend, of course. And a few of the faces I saw there yesterday, I think, might be helping out at the Prohibition Bar, which is closely allied, I think, isn't it? And all the excitement that's going on there. What are you up to this weekend? Uh, let's start with you, Suzanne. Um, helping out at the Prohibition Bar. <laughs> I thought you might say that. I thought you might say that. Becky, are you helping out at the Prohibition Bar? I might pop down there and take some photos a bit later, yeah. <laughs> Well, Colin and I popped in there on the way home. Um, he was actually stuck in this position. You know, he was shooting. That <laughs> I had to carry him around for the rest of the day, stuck in this position because um, he had a little spasm and, and he was stuck like that. But <laughs> the, the progress down at the Prohibition Bar um, is amazing. And that'll be opening not this, not today. Um, we've had a change, haven't we? It's not a good Friday opening. It's next weekend. You can go along right. on yeah. Friday, yeah. Saturday or the Sunday. And I think quite a few of us will be there on the Sunday and there'll be music in that garden there. What an amazing thing. So I I, I hope to see you there uh, next time I see you. Anything else you want to say about netball and netball in Portugal specifically before you go this morning? No, just get in touch with us, ladies, if you'd like to give it a go. Or Wonderful. set your own club up, even. Yeah, what a lovely invitation. And thanks again. I had such fun. And, and yes, you turned my terrified face. as um, <laughs> She's still laughing at me. Look at her. Ha, ha, ha. Fear on his face. <laughs> Um, we love thank you. Brilliant. Thank you for turning yeah. that frown upside down and uh, giving us such a great time. Then me, me, you know, Colin and I, as we drove over to the Prohibition Bar, we were singing "Bring Me Sunshine" like Morecambe and Wise in the Toyota <laughs> car that we had. It was we had a lovely day. So, and that was so much down to you and all of your colleagues over there. So, thank you very much. Have a great thank weekend. You. Take care. Uh, bye for now. Oh, bye. See you. Ciao, ciao. Bye for now. See you. There they go. The Silver Coast Sirens. How wonderful! Great day yesterday. And um, we'll have Paulo Fonasi and Senor João Teixeira Simplicio joining us from the AD political party in a few minutes' time. I want to show you um, what was happening in Lisbon yesterday. Um, across from the Vasco da Gama Bridge, a tornado in Portugal. This is quite incredible uh, footage that uh, was, was making its way around the news outlets um, of Portugal and across social media, of course. And Daniel Reis of Reis and Pelicano told me about this uh, yesterday tornado in Lisbon. This is quite incredible. Look at this. I don't think there's any sound on this, but actually I don't want sound <laughs> on this. It's terrifying. Look at that. Across from the Vasco de Gama Bridge, somebody capturing that. A tornado in Portugal there. Quite extraordinary, huh? Look at that. <laughs> you can't turn around at that point. My goodness. Okay. And we've got Paolo Fanasi to come. I think we might give him a nice big round of applause and um, start our conversation uh, with Senor Joao here. So uh, let me give him a nice big round of applause and bring him onto the screen because I think he's really down there in the Algarve. Hola, bon dia. Tudo bem? Hola, bon dia. Uh, Senor Joao, uh, so good to see you. Thank you very much uh, for being with us this morning and congratulations to you. 
Well, thank you very much. First of all, I thank you for the opportunity of being here, sharing this moment with you. And of course, of everybody and everybody else that is watching the stream directly or even later on. It will be a big pleasure. Yeah, I just hope this is a very good added value for your service here that is very positive. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it will be. It's it's always good for us, I think, to find out a little bit more about Portuguese politics because that gives us an insight into Portuguese psyche, psychology and culture. Um, in this very special year, of course, as well, with the 50th anniversary of the Carnation Revolution, what an amazing time for AD to come to power in this particular year. And it is a new, um, I would say, a new force or a new collection of, of, of political uh, people um, in this particular form of AD. And that's my first question for you. And let me bring Paolo onto the screen as well. Let's give him a round of applause. Paolo also joining us. Hola, bon dia to you. Paolo, good to see you. Good morning. Ciao, good morning to you. And as you may have heard me ask uh, as well here, uh, Paolo, AD, um, to me, it was new in this election. Could you explain, uh, please, Joao, how the AD came together um, for this particular election and why? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to make it clear that there is AD that is a very old uh, name used by a coalition of parties here in Portugal. Okay. okay? That is called Alianza Democrática. That is a political coalition that existed previously, and today they renewed this name in this new coalition. Okay. It's combined by three political parties in Portugal, PSD, Social Democrats, uh, Central Christian uh, Service of Party, it's called CDS, and uh, Monarchic Party. This is, AD is the ones that are not just forming government, okay? I belong to a, a political party that is also has a new name since we have the last president called Bruno Fialho, the ADN party. That is the Portuguese name that stands for DNA. And it's, it means, yeah, and it means alternativa Democratica Nacional. Okay. It means an alternative democracy solution for Portugal. Uh -huh. Okay, so some people used before the, I mean, uh, right after the elections, that probably the name ADN and the name AD, yes, yeah, this combined coalition was mixed up by the Portuguese electors. Well, that is a surprise for us. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because we've been having, well, this year is going to be 50 years from the, the, the so-called revolution. Uh, and we've been having always these two political major parties, PS and PSD. Mm -hmm. Only one letter spreads them. Yes. And nobody, never mistaken. Yeah. So why this big first nowadays saying yes. that ADN didn't get these hundred and hundred thousand and something votes because people were mistaken. <laughs> well, this is a uh, this is a social joke today. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, anyway, uh, ADN. Uh, it's uh, I would say it's the new political party. We couldn't. We just for a little bit. We can. We were not able to elect somebody to the parliament. Okay. Yeah, uh, it was very close, but uh, we say now uh, we are playing in the first league of political parties in Portugal. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Mm. This is our position now, and of course, it is always a pleasure to be sharing our ideas uh, and, of course, listen to suggestions because this is what we do, we don't have any. I would say professionals as politicians in our party, but we have working people, very good professional people that want to give themselves to society 
to build a better society for everybody that chooses to live in Portugal. Wow. Well, what a lovely way to reframe and, you know, the back to basics of politics. That's how it should be, right? That, like public service to, to society to make a better society. And sometimes we forget this, don't we? In other parts of the world, it seems they've completely forgotten about that, that work ethic and that political ethic. So thank you uh, for restating that. Um, so can I just be clear with you? you, you are you an AD representative or are you from another party and now an AD representative? Is that how it works? No, we are AD and political party. We don't belong to any coalition. Oh, okay. Right. We are a single political party. Right. The one that just rose to the first league of political parties in Portugal. Okay. All right. Very interesting. Um, it and was, uh, oh, sorry, carry on. Sorry. No, sorry. It was, uh, there was a lot of talking about ADN political party because the, la the previous elections for parliament, we had nearly 10,000 votes. Okay. Yes. And now these last ones we reached, we overcome the 100,000 votes. That's why everybody was fuzzing about and talking about ADN. Yes, sorry, I, so, made, I, I fell into the mistake you were talking about, but that's because I'm a foreigner, I think, and I'm sure Portuguese people understand this a lot better than no, I do. No, we understand. <clears throat> we understand that, uh, excuse, of course, somebody that is not used to talk about uh, yes. work in politics in Portugal, it's very common to make these mistakes, even between the two major political parties, yes. PSD and PS, yes. because they only have the difference from one letter. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's much acceptable. But oh, thank, right. <laughs> thank you for giving me the opportunity of clarify that. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you're here to do that. And I think it helps. Um, I, I'm known for asking the silly questions here. If anyone else has got one, um, I, I'm ha very happy to ask it for you. But if there's anything our viewers, our audience, our Gumpus here want to know about Portuguese politics, um, th these are some great gentlemen on the screen who can answer that question for you. Now, Paulo. I think you're on record as saying what changes things in, in Portugal is getting involved in politics, and that's exactly what you're doing. Which, which, how are you going to be doing that, and which party are you aligning yourself with? No, I, I, I like uh, Alternativa Democrática Nacional uh -huh. uh, because uh, for me uh, is the right uh, home for all foreigners and all expats because it's a humanist party that preach legality ending corruption, economic freedom, and lower taxes. Great. So, <laughs> that sounds good uh, to me. No, yes. So uh, I think uh, the, all, uh, all foreigners uh, agree. Uh, all foreigners who I, I work, who I, I, I am, who I, I know, uh, agree the, the, this, uh, this ideologic, uh, this programmatic uh, lines uh, so I think uh, the Alternativa Democratica Nacional is the, the best choice for all uh, foreigners uh, who live in, uh, in Portugal. Uh, and by, because, uh, because we, uh, like, uh, as a foreigner, as uh, expats, uh, we, we uh, have, um, uh, we, we want legality immigration because, uh, because, the, 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 because Portugal uh, become unsafe uh, year by year. Uh, is uh, the situation become worse uh, in Albufeira when I live uh, particularly? Uh, so uh, we need uh, we need to fix that, uh, and I think uh, Alternativa Democratica Nacional is a right choice for us for this uh, previous uh, reason. Uh, so uh, is uh, I, I think uh, I think I, one day I told to you in the like, last month that the politic is the the most uh, fasted and, and um, uh, efficient uh, way to to resolve problem uh, in yes. Portugal to the people mm -hmm. uh, because many people uh, uh, found uh, uh, make a foundation and then to help people and then uh, go to the major to ask support or oh, I don't know I think uh, the, the the best way to help people is in, inside the, the politics, yes. inside the palace, <laughs> not, well, to kiss, not to kiss the hand of the of the of the of the, uh, the, the hand of the of the king, 
but he's become the, the king. Man. Become the king instead. Yes, which which is which is what I, I think is your strategy. Good morning to you, Joel de Norte. Bon dia, Portugal. I'm turning finally this evening. Very happy to come back home to Portugal. And Erica Kay, pleased to see you. Nice to see the future mayor of Alba Feira here this morning. That's that's you there, Paulo. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> Yes, Paolo Pulassi. We Italians absolutely know the illegal situation in Italy yes, as well. Yes, okay. yes, 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 yes. Very, very interesting. Um, Joao, can I come back to you then? So with ADN, um, it, I think foreigners, immigrants, uh, were quite, um, I guess, scared of, of Shager's, the rise in Shager's popularity, uh, fearing the worst. I spoke to a Shager representative on the show here to find out exactly what their view is on, on you know, migration because they have been uh, obviously in the media uh, with some very um scary messages messaging about you know migrants and foreigners and so on what is adn's position for us foreigners how how, how do you see migration how do you see us lot of foreigners uh, coming to your wonderful country hello again thank you again for the opportunity listen uh the portuguese we used to say that the portuguese is the last people on earth that can make any complaints about migrations okay <laughs> Because well, if you go if you go to the North Pole, you'll find the Portuguese there by the Eskimos. <laughs> if you go to Australia, you'll find the Portuguese with a shop in Australia. And these go on and on all over the world. Yeah. But the main issue here is not uh, we don't have anything against migrants. We are a welcoming country. We we'll, we are a welcoming population. But listen, the, the issue here concerning this uh, migration today, uh, I give you a small example. I was born in Angola. Angola was a Portuguese overseas province. Mm. And due to the war that is uh, well finished, they, they say finished in, for Portugal is 50 years now. It, it lasted in Angola for more 40 years, okay? uh so due to that uh my family and i and hundreds of thousands of other portuguese that were living in angola had to leave and when they returned to portugal this was a very big social problem because of the lack of houses the lack of work and the population increased a lot due to this situation and we are not talking about foreign people. We are talking about Portuguese people coming back to their main country. So what do we have to learn with this? That we cannot close down the borders because we do need migration. Mm. And when we say we do need migration, we talk about every, from A to Z, kind of migration the elder that want to have a retired life in a safe place with a good weather good food nice people to talk about they want to come they are welcome but we also welcome the families that are living in their own countries and they don't have any opportunities of having a house a work study uh, health uh, security they don't have anything like that they are also welcome in portugal mm. the issue here is that when you only bring people that are looking for safety are looking for jobs are looking for better way of life but when they arrive here they don't find that yeah that is the big problem and that happens why because we believe that the actual politics of migration in portugal is wide open doors and yes. wide open doors is not good politics in our point of view yeah. i would say like this the first example we usually give is for example you have your own home when you open the door of your house for somebody to come into your house is somebody that you know you don't open the door and let anybody else, uh, anybody just get into your house without you knowing what he's going to do. Yeah. This is the example. We just believe that we should have more control on our borders and we should have some pre-selection of the people that decide and choose to come and live in Portugal 
looking for better quality of life. We welcome all of them, but we do need to have a selection. As I said before, the Portuguese are the last people on earth that may say anything about migration because we are all over the place. Yes. <laughs> well, let, let they start uh, the first phase in moon base alpha and then you'll find a Portuguese thing. <laughs> I think there's already a point. There's already a bunch yeah. of up there. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm very embarrassed about the mistake I made uh, between the distinction. And I think given that I've made that mistake, others might make it too. But this, this distinction between AD and ADN, I'm very excited about what I think I know about ADN. Um, you also seem to be you're like a new force um, or a refreshed force in politics and very much the zeitgeist of a particular kind at the moment. Um, and I don't know if this is just your colleagues in Madeira who are feeling this, but I think, is it true to say that the ADN are standing up a little bit towards globalism as well and some of those overwhelming agendas that are not so good for um, national sovereignty and, 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 you know, smaller government within our own uh, nations rather than to superpowers? Could you, could you say a bit more about that, uh, Joao, as well? Of course. <laughs> Listen, the, the, that's the basics of yeah. our strengths and our fight. Yeah. We don't believe, uh, we don't accept this globalism. Yeah, There's, uh, we fight against the, the climate fraud, the climate agenda. We say it, it's a fraud because we, since the Earth exists, well, the planet, there has been always climate change, but never mankind decided that was man responsible for it and man should pay for it. And this is what this globalism wants to show and impose to the world. Yes. And we fight against that. We are the only political party in Portugal since the beginning of the presentation of this agenda 2030 that we fight against it in all its terms. Even the pandemics, when they say, oh, we need to protect you, listen, we are always the whistleblowing saying, listen, this is nothing to do with your self-protection or self-preservation. This is manipulation. This is control planning so that they have you controlled. We are the only political party that fight against that. We have people in our we have people in our political party that have been uh, sent away from their jobs, put it aside because they believe in this. Yeah. So we are the only political force in Portugal that actually fights against this every day. And that well, it's not a surprise that we have all these uh, malfunctioned, I would say, misunderstandings mixing ADN with AD uh, because people want to say, uh, I would say social media, they want to say that ADN really it's nothing. So we don't need to bother with that. Yeah. But the, the issue here is that ADN is already it became the stone in your shoe whenever they whenever they step forward they feel the stone <laughs> and that is bothering them <laughs> yeah and that is bothering them well this is an example this is an example yeah we showed your poster before <laughs> yeah yeah listen this is a this is a, an example of this this is uh, because the agenda 2030 is talking about carbon yeah. Carbon, it's, it's a major gas that it's necessary for life. Yes. You, you cannot have life without carbon. So why are now these people that they think they r rule the world, with what authority they decide that carbon is bad for you? Mm. Well, you know what? So um, this is just one of the examples, but we can go to any step of the agenda 2030 and yes. we say they they presented it as a very nice way of showing how to protect you yeah that reminds me 
a movie I, I saw, uh, I would say a thousand years ago, because it was in the last millennium, <laughs> uh, that uh, some aliens came to planet with a book saying to serve man. Yes. And they did start serving man with uh, production in the desert, food for everybody, free water to everybody, everybody, the world was happy. And when they started inviting them to go to their country, at the end of the movie, somebody yelled, don't go to the ship because we, trans we finally translated the book to serve man. That's a recipe book. Yes. Yep. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, where do I so sign this up? Is, <laughs> this is how we want to show, this is how we want to show the world, yeah, especially the Portuguese first, and of course the world, that this agenda 2030 is like this. It, this is to serve mankind, but it's almost like a, a recipe book. They want yeah. to cook you. <laughs> I understand, I understand, Joel, and um, this is turning into the most exciting conversation for me personally, and I want to know where I sign up for ADN, but this is not about me. This is about trying to find out about the, the richer picture of politics here in Portugal. But I, wanna, I do want to, obviously, give, given that you're from the ADN, we'd love to find out more about your manifesto and policies and, and what your intentions are. Um, Paulo, just to be clear, from your point of view, as a mayor, of, as a future mayor of Albufeira, what part? What party will you be aligning with for that purpose? Oh, I think uh, Alternativa Democrática Nacional is right. uh, and me uh, together. Uh, we will do a exceptional job for all uh, residents of Albufeira. For me right. and for Alternativa Democrática Nacional, uh, is clear that uh, we have not uh, resident for uh, class A and resident class B. Uh, because we take care about all of residents. Yes. Uh, we, we want uh, legality, and, uh, and I think Alternativa Democrática Nacional is the, is the right party yes. uh, to, to the, the home of the all, all uh, people. Uh, because uh, because in, in Albufeira we have uh, uh, around 50% uh, of uh, foreigners, uh, resident of population, 50% per, uh, is... Uh, is a, a foreigner. So uh, we have a multicultural uh, uh, city here, and, uh, but the Alternativa Democrática Nacional uh, is, a, is a right party for us because uh, they want legality, lower taxes, uh, um, um, freedom, economic freedom. Yes. Uh, and we need, we need a legality a situation, more, uh, more, uh, more uh, um, uh, wealth, uh, better wealth in Albufeira. We have no no uh, public hospital here. An example. Uh, we need the uh, the um, put safe the city because uh, because the the woman, especially particularly the woman, have scared to walk uh, in the night. For example. So we we need uh, more uh, um, police municipal the police municipal police. We need more of them. We we need uh, uh, the video cameras to. Um, to in the in the old town, an example, uh, we need uh, we need to fix uh, many many things, and uh, and uh, and we need more and better integration. You know, I, I always fight for more and better integration with all foreign communities, uh, and, and so we I am I think I am the right person to to to, to integrate to integrate all the all the communities here. Uh, in uh, with uh, law, with respect in for, for Portuguese law. Yes. For, for me is a, is a, is the focus. Portuguese law, Portuguese constitution is the is the is the focus. Uh, and uh, love of Portugal because he uh, there here is a paradise. So I think uh, all all people uh, who who want to live in Portugal uh, know there is a paradise. But but paradise. Uh, for everybody, no, right now is not paradise for everybody. You see, you see many, many situations that uh, many people have explored with a lower salary. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the, um, we need, uh, we need an example: housing, social housing, uh, political uh, about social housing, because we have uh, many, many uh, people who live uh, ten in a, in a, in apartment. An example. Because yeah. uh, we have many many problems here about uh, the about the, the houses, 
for for the people. So we need to fix that to fix it, and uh, we will um, fix it uh, the next year with the Alternativa Democrática Nacional. Fantastic. Now I want to find out more about your policies. I want to find out where you stand uh, in the country and on a local level in councils around the country to see what's happening with ADN. Um, and as I say, this is quite the surprise for me this morning. I'm very excited to find out more. Um, the, Erica has a question who, who wants to welcome you as the mayor of Albufeira, I think. Immigrants living conditions matter. Everyone loves cheap berries, but whose hands pick those berries? I think that comes back to the law, doesn't it? Some of these terrible situations in which immigrants are living are against the law in Portugal. Is that right, uh, uh, Paulo? Hello. Yeah, uh, uh, in uh, uh, immigrant uh, living condition matter uh, is uh, uh, Erica or uh, all people here in Albufero, in Algarve, know uh, uh, who I, I am, who I, I, I fight for, for them. Uh, because uh, because uh, for me uh, um, the, the for me are not uh, immigrants or, or for me it's not like about care about uh, passport for me yeah. is the about people because at the end Alternativa Democratica Nacional is a humanist party yes so yes. what is important is legality legality yeah. and yeah. to came uh, because the problem is here right now in the the last two three years. Uh, the wide open uh, policies about uh, immigration, uh, you see a tragedy situation because mm -hmm. uh, you see uh, you see uh, the people in, in uh, under the under the wall under the, the, the bridge uh, mm -hmm. to leave. An example is not possible. So is is important is okay came to Portugal, but you need a uh, work, you need you need a house because if you don't uh, um, do that. Uh, you see, like look like Lisboa in the, in, in many situations, and uh, other 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 problem. You uh, uh, my, uh, I can imagine my children go to the school, don't speak Portuguese. Is an example, not mm -hmm. not the truth, but an example. And go to the uh, with the other uh, eighty per, uh, percent of, of, of children who don't speak Portuguese. Who uh, is impossible to to uh, to to teaching and impossible to learning in yes. this situation. So we need a, a better organization in the school, in, in the in all in all the the city. You need you, you are here in Albufeira, uh, more than fifteen thousand person who don't speak Portuguese is a problem. So I, I I want a program a program strong program to learn Portuguese to the people. An example because because the integration come and start. With the language, an example. Well said. Well said. That's why I'm working on these T-shirts today. Podemos falar português devagar, por favor. So we we're with you. We're with you on that. The importance of learning Portuguese, and we're going to be doing a lot. Let me turn to Senor Joao here. Um, I want to find out more about ADN, please, Joao. Um, what is your current representation after the last election? And do you have lots of councilmen and women around the country as well? Uh, we are working on that. Uh, yes. I am the vice coordinator of the commission of ADN in the Faro district, well, right. Algarve region. Okay, yep. Yep. so I, I'm here together with Paul, but I'm the, uh, also the co-responsible of the Portimão city. Okay. okay, so I'll be also responsible for the municipality here in Portimão. Uh, yes. But and of course, because we are talking about the Algarve. Mm -hmm. The Algarve has some problems that are very particular to the Algarve. Yeah. But before I get to these problems, I would like to reinforce the idea that Paul already gave it here, mm -hmm. that the first thing that we, ADN, defend as being a humanistic uh, political party is that the fundamental law in Portugal, or the constitutional law, does be respected. Mm -hmm. And it is not being respected. The freedom of speech, the freedom of belief, and we have seen uh, lots of uh, people being persecuted by their own beliefs. So this is something that we do stand. Fundamental law, constitutional law is to be respected. We want the people to be free to do, decide, think, speak, what they want without being persecuted this is what the constitutional law says and this is what we defend 
we want the people to know that their rights are defended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, all the guarantees that they have as citizens being national, born in Portugal, or national, not being born in Portugal, or being even foreign residents in Portugal. The constitutional law is for everybody. Yeah. But yeah. unfortunately, yeah. This, we don't have being there. We also believe in private uh, economy. So some parties defend that this should be all public, belong to the state. No, we believe in private property. We are with the private property. So if you fight and you work all your life to have your own property, why you don't? Why you shouldn't have it? Yes. Uh, so this is we defend the private property also. Yes. Yes. Uh, this there are major problems in Portugal that also come to the Algarve: housing, the lack of work, and the Algarve has a bigger problem that goes together with all this that is general in Portugal, is low season. Mm -hmm. When we talk about Porto and Lisbon, for example, they have probably a low season month. That is probably Ju July or August, when everybody goes on holidays, because the school are holidays. Yeah. yeah? The Algarve has a six month low season period. Yes. So we have a big problem in the Algarve. So how can we fix workers in the Algarve if we can only have jobs for them for six months? Right. People they need to leave. People they need to leave twelve months a year. They don't need to leave just six. Yes. Yeah? Absolutely. absolutely. So we have a big problem here also in the Algarve, especially because of our housing, and we see the problem. Lots of people come to live here. Some Lots of the, the housing in the Algarve, they are particular placed for rental, for tourism. Yes. That is not bad. But how can we explain, uh, I would say, all Portugal, that 80% of the production in Portugal comes through tourism? And yeah. 80 or 90% of this tourism is in the Algarve. How can we accept? that the average low the lowest average wage in portugal is in the algarve mm -hmm. this is something that we don't accept How Fair come? yeah the algarve yeah. the algarve is the the, the, the place that uh, gives most to the, the the production of portugal why the the the, the worst wages or the lowest yeah. wages in all the country yes well, this is the things that we fight. Uh, of course, we believe in free market. We believe that the government shouldn't be uh, in this free market right. because of the because of the huge difference of opportunities. Of course. Yes. Yep. Fascinating. This is, uh, We'll hear more. We'll hear more from you. Uh, this, uh, yes, this has been quite the pivot for me this morning, um, and we've got some great comments coming in. Uh, how lovely to hear someone speak about sensitive humanitarian perspectives of immigration. This Facebook user says, "I think Ima should do a great work checking all the touristic visas, meaning check people really went back after ninety days and are therefore not illegal here." Back to the law there. Um, by hand, he does know a few people who made the mistake and voted for the wrong party. We'll see what happens with that over time. Um, interested, interesting to listen to a different narrative. I also believe we are manipulated as well. And uh, my wife there, I feel good astrology. She likes your poster as well, the gentleman. Um, we also, uh, uh, people recognize the Twilight Zone episode that you mentioned there. It's called To Serve Man, one of my favorites. Yes. Yep, exactly. I, don't, I don't know if, um, yeah, beware of anyone saying to serve man. Um, Erica saying, I don't know if this is a joke. It's nice to see two different political advocates on the same show. Well, they're from the same political perspective. I don't know if that's a, an attack on my editorial management, but political parties of any kind are welcome to come and stake their case on the show. I might not be doing the best job of that, starting with Shager and now ADN, and we've not had a mainstream speaker. We have Doc with Bloca Esquerda, 
but they are welcome to come. They're absolutely welcome to come. The book the aliens brought with them was a cookbook, absolutely, as uh, Joao said there. Um, and you also remind Pete um, in Fundau of, uh, from a Twilight Zone episode, The Good Life, as Anthony Fremont uh, there as well, with your, um, your Hollywood good looks there, obviously, Joao. Um, thank you, Paolo. Fear to be alone outside at night in Abu Fair is something we don't hear in the tourist-centred news. So um, I think she's uh, thanking you for addressing that. And just a little bit of background then um, on, on the history of the ADN I found from the website. Uh, born on September the 28th, 2021. That's the ruling there in the Constitution regarding the name change as well there. ADN, National Democratic Alternative. And um, this is interesting. Your, your kind of soundbite, if you like, your... your um, Brief manifesto here, aiming to defend and deepen the corresponding values based on human dignity, freedom, equality, justice and solidarity as a result of the party's need to assert itself as a true alternative without any ideological prejudice, embracing the political and or ideological options. Now, I like that distinction there. So many parties, so many people, you could say, are lost in ideology. Would you say you're bringing politics back down to earth, more pragmatic, more human? And humanistic is, is is am I getting that right? Am I hearing that correctly, Joel? That is our goal. That's right. why we say we are not political. We are not professionals as politicians. Okay, we want to bring political to the basics to serve yes. the people, to be yep. with the people, to understand the people, and yes. to help and yes. to make the society better for everybody that decided decides to live here. I would like to ask for an opportunity to, to leave this information here because maybe this is not known by lots uh, uh, of uh, foreign people that decided to live in Portugal. Right. The, the residents in Portugal, they are allowed to vote in municipality elections. Okay? The Portuguese law allows foreign people that choose to even if it is temporary residents he is allowed to vote in the municipality elections so i give this information to everybody here Thank that you. if you intend also to be a part an active part in society where you are you just have to go to the junta de freguesia and put your name into the charts that allows you to vote for municipality we hear, we hear, hear Paulo saying he's going to be the next mayor in uh, Albufeira. I have no doubt about that because all the Algarve is going to work for that. And of course, as well as we are going to work for the other candidates for any, the, all the other, uh, well, 15 remaining municipalities in the Algarve. Yeah. But we count with the foreign people that live here, the residents, the expats. Yeah, because we need to understand your difficulties, your needs, and we want to make a society with you. Well, I love the sound of that. I love the sound of that. And, you know, I guess people are very cynical, aren't they, when it comes to with all that's happened in these last few decades and, and you know, the this... Um, the uni party, we're calling it in the UK, you know, how, how the, the centre parties have just become one ideological ineffective force that doesn't seem to serve people very uh, well mm. and here you are proposing something i think a little bit different returning to humanistic values and a human angle rather than domination by ideology uh paula would you like to say some more i um, mean maybe we'll keep you for another five minutes if we may i know you you guys are busy you're, you're working men as well as doing this so paula tell us more about how you approach or how you're going to approach becoming mayor of albufeira Yes, now we we we, we fight the, together all the the people here, all the communities. Uh, solidarity uh, is uh, is uh, our goal too. Uh, we have uh, many many problems here in Albufeira. Albufeira is a is a beautiful beautiful uh, city, uh, but uh, mo uh, many people uh, live uh, very good, in very good condition. But is uh, came from other countries like uh, retired. If you need to, to work here, it uh, is a very problem. Uh, for is a hell for many, many people to, for two things. Uh, and, and we need to fix that. 
the only only uh, the people only work in, in, in tourists the major the, the most uh, uh, people work in tourists so they work only just uh, six months per year mm -hmm. so we need we need to to to, um, to diversify uh, to make a, another politics for uh, attracting attracting the investor an example technology we need uh, we need I, I, my, my dream is uh, is Algarve is uh, um, in the in the winter in the is a, a little Silicon Valley. We need wow. we need no yeah. we need to attract we need to attract we need to attract a, a polo technological. We need a, it's like Santa Maria da Feira, an example in the north of Portugal. Make sure. the, the decision to to invest in a, in a, to attract a, a investor from internet in technology. We have many digital nomads here. We need to work for other 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 companies in the other country. Why this this company don't came here? Because we, we because here we have, we have high taxes. We need to, to to we need the low taxes to attract other other investor. Not only just not only tourists. Because Portugal and Algarve is a paradise for families to live, but not to work. So we need we need to attract to attract uh, uh, not only the family of the of the boss of the company, but the company too. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, well, great ideas. I mean, Rui Correa has, has joined us. OMG! Oh my God! Politics and tourism. No, and tourism, one of the industries I dislike the most for multiple reasons. The way it exists in Portugal. I think you're on the same page here. Although Rui is saying, "I'm here for the astrology today." We'll see. Um, I'm liking what I hear about ADN very much indeed. Um, oh, other comments please, coming in. Please. Go ahead, Joel. Oh. I would just like to give you here uh, a note also that is basics in our politics here, measures, in our measures here for the Algarve. We've been talking about housing, conditions of people to live and be here. Uh, Paulo just talked about uh, the idea of a little Silicon Valley in the Algarve. Yeah. Uh, but we do have something very straight here to the Algarve. And we call it the continuous uh, working contract. Right. Uh, because we have a big problem with the season that lots of people come to work in the Algarve during the high season and then they have they go home they go to Dole yeah but we yeah. have this program that we want to implement here in the Algarve that is called the continuous working contract it yeah. means that the worker is working and being paid by the company that contracted him for the high season when it comes to the low season, the, he will still keep the same wage, but who's going to pay him is going to be balanced between the company and the state. So it wow. means he's not going to be six months just on the door. Mm -hmm. He's going to get some of his payment from the door and some of the payment from the company that is working and that will allow him to have a 12 month contract yes what, how does this work it gives lower costs of maintaining the job for the company in low season that they don't, don't have clients yeah but they keep the doors open working so we finished we finished this idea of having the algarve in winter time as zombie land right absolutely okay? Yeah. And of course, we also <clears throat> decrease the costs of doll of people that stay here for six months without any work, just getting the doll. Yes, incredible. And of that course, this will help the families because then they get a house for the whole year. Then they can apply for a credit to buy their own house because they work for 12 months a year, not yeah. just six. Yeah. Because if you work six years and then you interrupt for six and then six months and then you interrupt for the next six months and so on when you go to the bank and apply for a mortgage to buy your own place yes they say sorry you don't have any security for us to lend you money right and you can't have yeah. a stable society can you if if, if you create yes, that of course. With, without yes, of course. Stuff, without bringing so this is a very yeah. this is a strong objective that we have here and we're yeah. going to fight for it in yep. every aspect of it yep. we want to have people working in the algarve for 12 months a year yes 
incredible. That is uh, that is one of our major goals. Yep. Uh, farm workers should be provided with the same consideration as tourist workers. So Erica lobbying for the farm workers as well, who we need. Uh, bon dia to you, Sarah Yerman. And a big difference between these guys and the USA. In the US, they were constantly talking over each other and neither would be able to be heard. Keep it up, guys. Uh, these guys are able to make their points without disparaging each other. Well, they are on the same side, to be fair. Um, but uh, at the same time, they are not talking over each other. Um, in this morning um, thank you so much for being here really appreciate it um, another point from Erica employers should be required to provide Portuguese language education before hiring or at least once they've started to make sure this the language is being learned right illiteracy is a perpetuator of human trafficking I'd never seen that before but I could see how that would work and um, I'm, I'm quite taken by the ideas of ADN here this morning, coming from this humanistic and less ideological point of view. I would like to see more independent candidates in politics because they can be more representative and accountable to the people that elected them. I think that's right. And I don't know if Pete is having a little jab here or if he means it. Going from 0.2 to 1.6% of the vote must be quite an achievement for ADN. That is good growth, isn't it? But still, I don't, I don't care about the, the, the result, uh, the last result. Uh, uh, for me, the important is the focus, the yeah. program, the, the the because all all people right now, the opportunist people want to go to join Shega, uh, PS, because it's the big uh, the big uh, party. No, yeah. for me, the important is to work, to focus the program, not uh, not the, the last result. The, the, the important, the future and the program. I want to I want to to represent in the in the, in the next election here and and to help the in the in, in June in the European elections in June we will be a yes. election for parliament Europe parliament yeah I want to to help Alternativa Democratica Nacional because I I I, I believe in, a, in the in the program in the party in the people of Alternativa Democratica Nacional so yes. uh, the, the result is uh, is uh, okay, it's important, but uh, but uh, it's not the only politics. Yeah. Uh, we we need to we need in the, in, in, in Portugal to fight. We need to fight for uh, who in, in in the in the party in the program who who, who the people believe, not yeah. uh, about the mathematics. Uh, about I oh, know I joined Shega because it's stronger party or uh, no no. It's important is what you think, what you heard your, in your heart is important. No, it's important. The focus is important about this. About her, not about mathematics. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that. Now, let's go to the last words then. We are running out of time and you've been very generous, both of you, with your time this morning. Um, if I may make a little bit of an assessment, as I understand it, um, I, I've had a real crash course in ADN this morning, but... It seems to me that, um, you know, Shager are very much using uh, immigration, foreigners as political capital. Um, and, and the same with the centre parties, I think. It's like, you know, well, we won't say much, but we'll let Shager say these things because that looks good for us. It would appear ADN could be a good home for foreigners and immigrants. Representation, um, humanistic values. This could be actually a welcoming party rather than just a party that manipulates foreigners for their own political gain. Um, it, could you can could you combine that with your last words this morning, uh, Joao? Please. Yes, of course. Uh, before I met Paulo, that is uh, has a very dynamic uh, work in the, the foreign community. Uh, yeah. May, of course, all over the Algarve, but mainly in Albufeira, I've been trying to reach the expat uh, administrators. Mm -hmm. Because since I got into this political party, I am trying to look for, and if somebody's listening here, they'll probably find my name, João Teixeira Simplicio, in the social media here in the Algarve, trying to reach the expats. Because, yes. uh, as, as I said before, uh, be, even being Portuguese, uh, my family and I, we were, we felt like foreigners, <laughs> right. even though we were Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, so being a humanitarian political party, we believe that men should be the priority in everything that we do. So for us, is first man, then family, First man, then family, traditional family, 
and then working condition and housing. And this is the basics that any family needs to be, well, to thrive. And if the family is okay, you will integrate a group of families that that makes society. And that is the society that we want to help to build. Not, we are not into politics because it's a good job. <laughs> yeah? That yeah. is the main reason. That is the main fight of ADA. We are right. not in politics because being a politician is a good job. No, no, no. We are not looking for the jobs for the boys. Yeah? Right. We, yeah. are, we are professionals in our own expertise that yeah. want to work for society. Yeah. And we want said, to bring these basics, basic politics, basics, politics for nowadays. Again, let's work for the public, not make the public work for us. Wonderful. Absolutely love that in the face of the globalist agendas that uh, some suspect are occurring at the moment. People first, family first, small businesses and local community. I'm, I'm loving the sound of this, Joao. Thank you so much, Paolo, for bringing Joao to us this morning. Paolo, what's your last word? Thanks. Thank you for being here again. Thanks for all you're doing down there in the South, you know, on behalf of the foreigners and, for, and on behalf of Portugal, because that's important. You have a great love of Portugal. You're not just about, you know, representing the foreigners, are you? You're bringing together this hybrid of loving this country and wanting to represent exactly. in that mix. So, Paolo, last word to you. Okay, uh, I, I, I want to, to thank you and uh, I guarantee for all uh, expat communities, I will fight for them uh, always, you know, uh, before this and, and uh, after. Uh, so trust us uh, and we, we, we will fight for, for you, for, and, uh, for all the communities and for better, uh, more and better integration here in Algarve and in all Portugal. Wonderful. So, muito prazer, uh, João. Muito obrigado. Bom fim de semana. Tchau, tchau. Até a próxima. 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 Obrigado, obrigado. Tchau, tchau. Wonderful. There they go. There they go. Wow. What a morning. I think Mrs. Emma summed it up beautifully here. This is an amazing show from playing with balls. That was a netball to having balls, political balls here. Um, very strong themes today. Much love, everyone. Uh, awesome show today, says Erica Kay. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, guests. It is a global problem. Yeah, right. I mean, what we're talking about here, I think, are global problems uh, and, the, and the specter of globalist agendas. But here we are, as Raul was saying, people first. Family first, local community is, is what I was hearing about ADN. And again, I apologize for my misunderstanding. And I, I fell for that um, um, acronym, acronym based problem there of confusing um, AD with ADN. So um, I, I think we put that right today. Um, and we found out what ADN were all about. Um, Pete saying we have a few wonderful immigrants who work for the local council and mayor who have integrated fantastically well. We depend very much on the gypsy community to collect our cherries as well, the cherry harvest in Fundal, but also have a great integration and a huge centre that helps people from Portugal's former colonies settle and find work here. Happy Easter to all who celebrate, says Pinky as well, who I think it's fair to say has enjoyed the show today. Um, and you're very welcome, uh, Joao, who is sending me a message there. Great to, to catch up um, with uh, Senor Simplicio there. Um, we'll have a quick a quick palate cleanse, a political palate cleanse. Let's go to Nazare for a moment, and then we'll have a few more minutes together before we go off into the Easter week. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? Um, happy plain old Sunday to those who don't. Okay, so those two messages go together. Thank you, Michael, for that uh, footage of Nazare there, which definitely was a refresher, wasn't it? Um, happy Easter to those who celebrate. Happy plain old Sunday to those who don't. Now we need to get some people who can speak for AD. Absolutely. I mean, you know, like I said, um, I maybe haven't gone about this in the right way. I don't know. Is it that good to have, like, 
the people from the different parties having a ding dong on the screen. I don't know. I don't think that's the best way. It's like a, it doesn't achieve very much, um, especially if they do talk e over each other, as you were saying, Joao. Although I think that's probably less likely in a Portuguese scenario. I think people are a little bit more respectful towards each other most of the time. Um, I, I really don't mind having um, the having a sort of you know peace and quiet and a, and a space in which people can present their own political um, party view, like we've done with Chega. Uh, like Doc does for a Bloco Esquerda and like we've seen today from ADN. But I do like, I really like their poster. I mean, it appeals to me and it won't appeal to everybody, of course. I'm just declaring my partisan interest and in it because it appeals to my sense of mischief and independence as well. So thank you very much, ADN. I think you might well be. And, you know, I thought I'm done with politics, quite frankly, but they might have dragged me back in. Who knows? Uh, Bonfi Samana from Bagandi. We'll have a look at your events in the Bagada district in just a moment. And sounds like I missed an Englishman and an Irishman and tutus. No, it's the Englishman and the half Irish, half Welshman. But don't worry. You get to see. Um, I, I can still show you a picture, Jackie, and I'm going to play your video. Um, your comment is um, Mrs. M seemed to say a oh, little move. There is good toes, naughty toes. Is that right? Um we were encouraged to do that, and you can see the look on my face. I'm a little bit scared and reluctant at that point, but we had a fabulous time after all. So, um, yeah, w there will be further footage shared, Jackie, uh, talking about uh, sharing footage. You did this for us, and you sent it in on 913-590-303. Thank you so much, Jackie, for your contribution to the Bon Dia Portugal videos. Uh, here you are. Bom dia, Portugal! I think, I think you, you, you're well shot. You're sounding a little bit like Bonnie Taylor there. Bom dia, Portugal! I can hear a little bit of a Welsh uh, top note on there, Jackie. Thank you so much. Uh, send yours if you'd like to share one with us on 913-590-303. Carl, you guys rock it. Oh, thank you very much. I love hearing from different political parties. Well, done, Carl. well we have started with the outliers, haven't we? And, and the sensationalists, if you like, um, with who we've um, had on the show. Sensible shoes. Joao de Nort, you look like you've had a fantastic time. Welcome home. Um, I think that's happening imminently, isn't it? Sensible shoes and ankle socks. Very British blokes. Roy! Sorry, guys, I can't do this today. I woke up in a good mood and this is depressing me. <laughs> I managed my head within a top and support range. I was hoping to hear casino predictions on the astrology. What's upset you? Was it the, uh, was it the politics or was it um, the picture of me in a tutu? I wonder. Sorry if that's what did it, Rui. Maybe that's cheered you up. Come on, it's the colours of the Portuguese flag right there. Um, let's go to the uh, highlights this weekend, certainly in the Bairada district. Gary saying time to get that nice cocktail dress from out the back of the wardrobe and dust it down. Who says it's in the back of the wardrobe? And the, I think I'm going to pick it up from the dry cleaners later on. Um, enjoy Portugal and make the world your chessboard and casino in the game of life. That's a good note to end on this morning. Over in Coimbra, evening of Fado and bar food at Azenia. Oh, that's um, it's Coimbra and Fado, not in Coimbra. An evening of Coimbra style Fado. Also notice, says Andy, the larger guitar de Coimbra. Different than the Lisbon style of the 12 string Fado guitar. We might go out with Casa Portuguesa this morning. I think we will. Um, staying in the Bairada then, uh, Trilho dos Munhos, a more um, windmill fun super weekend when the water mills are open. Not the windmills, then the water mills. And they're open to the public. And that includes a fantastic walk there in the Bairada. Aveiro, of course, it's the massive Easter fair and expo that happens every year there in Aveiro. Lots to see and do at Aveiro's main fair, big fairground, big indoor expo center, a market, free events like Zumba, dancing, food, fun and frolics and big name bands. Yeah, a lot of big name bands turn up there uh, from the Portuguese circuit. A walk for life in Aveiro. Sign up and join in to support ADAV Aveiro. That's five euros and of course includes a T-shirt water and a snack for that couple more then dune part deutsch are there um, a great value evening in the beautiful cartel des arts they have loads of great shows concerts and entertainment they're showing dune june part two there um Feres divertidas for easter there pasqua easter in iliavo check out the following pictures in and the link for the easter activities in iliavo and finally then uh, the Caminhada, the Primavera, a spring walk. Take part in this eight kil kilometer, I was going to say eight kilos, 
can't guarantee you'll lose that much. But if you do lots of them, you might take part in the eight kilometer guided communal walk and lunch. There you go. All of that in Agada for eight euros. And I dare say you'll get um, a lot included for your eight euros as well as uh, as we've come to uh, enjoy uh, here in Portugal. Thank you very much, by Randy, for those. Thank you, everyone who took part in the show this morning. Amazing. As Mrs. M said, started with balls. Um, playing with balls and ended with political balls. Last few of your comments then. Uh, Roy meant uh, forecast likelihoods in the casino of life. There, You'll have to talk separately to Mrs. M about that. Who doesn't do, incidentally, casino forecast? But Aries are certainly going through some transformations right now. Watch out for the 8th of April. Thank you very much for that. Visit. What's this? Visit, not vote. Bloody... Pro What's, she, what's uh, Jackie talking about there? Defo Welsh, boy -o. We'll see how Welsh, uh, see how Welsh when you visit, because I feed, 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 my friends. Lots of chockies and cakes, though, always. Yes, can't wait to meet you, Jackie. Um, when you, yes, when you visit, not vote there. Thank you very much. Or your mustard yellow jacket with the sleeves rolled up and no socks. That's a good look. Strong look from Gary Austin that re-emerged on social media uh, this morning. We enjoyed our trip through Spain, France and Italy. But landing in Porto this evening is going to bring a big smile to our faces back home in Portugal. Isn't it lovely to hear that? Um, and you don't need, if you're in Portugal, you don't need a prediction to tell you that you'll have a great weekend. Isn't that wonderful? Thanks, Pete. Uh, I've been in transformation since 1977 and probably before, but I don't remember anything before that. Oh, um, and um, I so hate that Pete no socks that bloke on Joker does my head in. I'm not sure what that means, Gary, but um, I think he might be eschewing your fashion advice this morning. Follow him on Instagram for more tips. Nice to have a, a variety of political representatives air their views, but seeing you had the guys who came in third, maybe we should hear the ones who came in second and first. Please, do you know how it works here? Um, people say, I'd like to come on and talk. Or they say, I know a guy who'd like to come on and talk. You you fix me up with those people. You set them up. You put the ball on the tee and I'll knock it down the fairway. I thought you looked a bit Miami Vice or Miami Doodly Vice uh, there. And Rui, off to the gym. Catch up later. Enjoy the day, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for this lovely good feeling on Feel Good Friday here in the chat. Wishing you all a blessed Good Friday and Easter. I pray that our faith stays stronger than the charades of our politicians. Hear, hear! Hoo -ah! To that, Squire of the Shires, good to see you here this morning. And a Pinky misread um, your cheese boards and as uh, cheese boards and casinos. Well, that sounds like a good weekend as well, doesn't it? A mixed tabua of, uh, of uh, fiambre and uh, queijo there. And uh, wishing you all a blessed Good Friday and Easter. Thank you very much for that one, Squire. And hope you still got to you still hope you still got your Choose Life T-shirt, Pete, from the 1980s. It'd be worth a fortune now. And Pasht Hapush Hapush Atorsh from uh, the Welsh greeting for a happy Easter from Peda as well. So let's go out then. Um, all this talk about you know how we love Portugal. Who what better to sum that up than Casa Portuguesa, the Fado tune? We heard about Coimbra and Fado. Let's go to Lisbon which I think is this is uh, represents the Lisboeta version of Fado and Casa Portuguesa. Have a great Easter weekend, and we'll see you again on Monday with James. Have a good one. Ciao. Bon fim semana. Até próxima. <laughs> Eu não posso ter isso,